Hello, my name is Tom and welcome back to my vlog where I talk a little bit about theatre, a little bit about being a PhD student and a little bit about those two things squished together. So today's one of those wonderful days where I get to talk about both the things that I'm really passionate about, kind of hand in hand. And partly this is a video that I've wanted to make for a little while now, but partly I'm also aware that it's that time of year where uh, A-level results have gone out and lots of people are heading off to start a course of study in theatre at many different uh, levels, whether that's undergraduate or postgraduate or um, also I just thought it'd be cool to make a video that was a little bit about some books which might be useful if you're a theatre maker maybe or involved in creating theatre um, and maybe want a bit more of a, a critical framework to think through how you think about the bits of theatre that you watch or make and how you uh, kind of intellectually respond to those. So today I'm going to share uh, five books which I found really really useful um, for starting to think more more broadly and more intellectually, I suppose, about theatre. Now what I've tried to do is pick some books which might not be uh, completely obvious. Um, I think there's a lot of books out there like The Empty Space or Stanislavski's work or Augusto Bowles, Theatre of the Oppressed, uh, maybe Brecht on Theatre, which are ones which if you find a list like this normally will almost always be on there. Each of those are books by theatre practitioners and um, very much uh, argue for a very particular kind of theatre which maybe looks in a certain way and maybe means in a certain way as well. So while those books are super useful and I certainly um, suggest going to read them to start to get an idea of what the theoretical underpinnings of certain forms of theatre are, what I wanted to do was maybe suggest some books which might uh, be harder to find out about if you've not kind of engaged academically or as intellectually with theatre before. And in fact my first two books aren't particularly about theatre at all but are more broadly ones um, about cultural theory. And so in this video there are my top five books um, for thinking about theatre. So book number one is Raymond Williams's Keywords. So this is a really seminal book um, written by the great cultural theorist Raymond Williams. And essentially what it is, it's a little bit of a glossary in which it will start to give you a kind of definition of what those terms mean within the kind of field of cultural studies. So a word such as culture, which might have a lot of different colloquial meanings. In this book, uh, Williams starts to refine what it might mean when we talk about it in an intellectual or academic context. He's also really keen to always point out when things have multiple or conflicting meanings um, and to really highlight that, not to necessarily suggest that one is better than the other, but really just to point out that different areas of theory will treat certain words in certain ways. So we have words like commercialism, community, criticism, uh, dramatic, elite, fiction, utilitarian, violence, all of these words which we can get quite used to using um, colloquially, but when we start to use intellectually or academically, we start to have to think about having more of a grounded definition of. The second book I wanted to suggest almost takes that idea a little bit further, and it is uh, Roland Barthes' Mythologies. Now this is very much a more of an English literature book, I'd suggest, than um, one that automatically pertains to uh, theatre or to drama. But what it starts to do is to dissect how cultural texts, so a play for example, or a book or a film, might start to have uh, political or social connotations to it. So for example there's a really famous essay within this book um, about a wrestling match and although it's looking at a wrestling match which is meant as just a kind of popular form of entertainment, what it does is starts to dissect what the different characters within the wrestling ring might mean and by extension it starts to look at what kind of political ideologies or uh, hegemonies if you watched my video the other day, the narratives which play out within that wrestling ring might start to either criticise or critique or perhaps to support. There's also some great chapters on visual art um, and some more popular modes of performance. And although it's not directly about theatre, I'd really suggest it's a great book that if you're anything like me and like to have quite an accessible way of starting to think about how politics and society and culture start to intertwine and interact with one another, it's a book that I found really, really inspirational and helped me to start thinking in a similar way um, about theatre. 
number three that I'd like to suggest is David Edgar's How Plays Work. Now this is primarily a book for playwrights or dramatists or dramaturgs, people that are thinking about how to construct a piece of theatre. Um, particularly I'd say it's for um, people who like to create narrative driven pieces of work. So rather than kind of postmodern work or post dramatic work which explores an idea, I'd suggest that uh, most of the book pertains to the writing um, of theatre which explores characters which have fairly naturalistic storylines. However, in explaining to the potential playwright or dramatist how to construct a piece of theatre, I also think it uh, suggests some really good ways um, of analysing. So whether you consider yourself to be a playwright or a director or a lighting designer or an actor or a stage manager or all or none of the above, I'd certainly suggest that how plays work is a really good way of starting to think about how narrative plays a part in um, what theatre means and what it looks like and how narrative is constructed. I'd also say, because there is lots and lots of different books which are like this or aim to do a similar thing, that this um, has this wonderful middle ground of it is incredibly accessible, it's um, not hard to read at all. At the same time it's written by David Edgar who is both um, a very influential uh, playwright, uh, primarily coming from the State of the Nation plays of the 1970s, but also was Professor of Playwriting at Birmingham University. So it straddles a wonderful line between being both academically reputable, but also being eminently readable. For book number four, I'm not actually going to suggest a single book, but a series, and it's the Theatre and series. Now I'm not for one minute suggesting that you go away and read every single one of the books in this series before you start your drama degree or before you go and watch your next play, but I, what I would suggest is that they're really great accessible uh, ways into starting to think about theatre in relation to lots of different themes. They're all quite short books, either a little under or a little over a hundred pages, and therefore can be read in a couple of sittings, or if you've got a long train journey perhaps, um, they can be a really good way to while away that time. And each book looks at the relationship between theatre and a certain other thing. For example, this one looks at theatre and the concept um, of nation. Uh, there's a book by Jen Harvey which looks at theatre and its relationship to the city. Uh, there's Dan Rebellato's Theatre and Globalisation. There's a whole range of them written by um, really, really um, great academics who very much know these fields, but are also very good at writing um, for people to read. They're not books which are completely clouded in lots um, of theory, and where they do invoke um, either philosophy or political theory or some other kind of um, deep uh, theory, they do take the time to introduce those things uh, properly, so that you're not expected to have previously read a lot on that topic before. So perhaps what I'd suggest is going on the Palgrave Mac Millen website um, and having a little look through this series and finding one which um, is theatre and something you're interested in. And I think as an introduction to academic reading and academic writing, just reading through um, a book that you're already a little bit interested in will be a great uh, door to um, writing yourself and also to reading slightly more complex texts. The final book that I'd like to suggest is one that I do not have on my shelf at the moment as I've lent it to a friend. It's actually a book that is very rarely on my shelf as I'm always lending out to people and that is Theory Slash Theatre by Mark Fortier. Now this is very much meant as an introductory book. Um, it's got a lot in common with uh, the module that I'm teaching on next term, in fact, as the kind of introduction to theatre and theory. It looks at theatre in certain contexts and from various different theoretical backgrounds. So there's chapters on theatre and semiology, theatre and feminism, theatre and postmodernism, and it really takes you through how both the discipline has developed over the past 50 or so years, but also um, different different ways that you can approach looking at theatre in the present day. Because as I hope that I've started to show with some of my videos and my kind of performance analysis videos, you can always approach the same bit of theatre from many different angles. And I think Theory Slash Theatre is a really good book for starting to introduce both the breadth of uh, 
academia of scholarship which exists within the field of theatre but also um, gives you that idea of how the field has developed. So there you have my uh, top five books um, for theatre students or, or people that are just really super into theatre and want to have um, a kind of better critical framework for understanding it. Um, if you have books that you particularly like about theatre that I have missed out then please do drop them below in the comments it'd be great to hear about them and to um, maybe come up with a slightly bigger list so that when people come to, to watch this video there's even more below um, but thank you very much for watching once again uh, if you haven't subscribed then please do consider doing so it'd be great to see you uh, around again and um, thank you very much and have a great week